the VRAM transfer system, the last major part of a SNES engine, in the generic sense at least, is transferring data to VRAM based upon your frames updates. There are a few methods, pure, bespoke. With this method you have a custom setup for each style, CG RAM updates, screen updates and tile updates. Possibly your palette updates are heavily constrained, all 256, or 128 backgrounds, sprites and blocks, etc. I.e. you don't update the palette during frames very often, and it's more about large, seldom done updates. Your game only scrolls left and right, so you only need vertical 32 stepping map DMAs. And you'll need it every um, 4 to 16 frames. Or, you know, up and down, so you only need horizontal DMAs. If you do update fixed sprites like Mario World did, for example, then put a flag on it and do it directly. It's always the same amount to the same location. I.e., write custom DMA and sources for the exact specifics for your game. Dynamic per type. This way you have a custom buffer for CG RAM, screen updates, and tile updates. This keeps the DMA setup tighter as you init the basic variables, mode, desk, etc. in code with immediate loads on a fixed DMA channel. And then do all the transfers of that mode and target address at once. Keeps your code easier to maintain and extend as each module lives on its own. It also gives you course controls over the DMA order and overflow protection. Pure Dynamic Now you have a single stack buffer that holds all DMA data. And you either just store the DMA packet data in raw, which can save you some time as you just copy and fire and fire etc. Or store a mode byte, which you switch on and run custom hardcoded setup for each type for your engine's needs. In this case, it can be better to have two stacks, one that holds the DMA setup data and one that holds the data to be sent. When you think of a stack, you typically think of a large buffer that you add to and read to byte by byte. If you have a custom data structure you want to put the stack on, you can instead split it, such that each field of the structure has its own stack that is accessed by the same head number, i.e. mode, fill 8, dest, fill 8, etc., and then you index and store them to the registers with a single INX or INY. If you have from buffer and from ROM source, you can use different channels for them. This way, the from buffer source pointer doesn't need to be updated as the hardware will increment it for you. You can set the stack to be at the top of the DMA register you want, then set the DP to start at the DMA data stack. This way, you load with the DP instruction, which is faster, and then you can push A to write the value. So you get a 3 clock read and a 3 clock write, with some setup overhead, if you unroll the loop. 4-4 four, four if you do it in 16-bit with double I and X, I and Y. Another way, if you store the data in the stack in DMA order, you can then MVP or MVM the block into place. This has the benefit that source doesn't need to be in shared RAM, as NVX can see all and any bank it wants. X and Y are updated, so you only need to reload one of them when doing the next DMA. You can just LDA 000,X to check if the chain has ended. For loading pre-chains out of ROM, you need to be able to modify source bank for the move. There is a small trick. You can put MVN slash P into the upper bytes of a DMA slot. Since you are doing DMA, not HDMA, registers 7, 8, 9, A and B are free for you to use as self-mod code. This way the modification happens as fast clocks and you can set both with a word write. If your DMA needs is small enough, i.e. less than the number of free DMAs you need, you can just write the DMA registers in prep rather than filling in DMA data on the stack. Then when it comes time to do the DMA, you simply write the enable byte and just let it fire them all. This only works if you only have a single DMA to each port, though all the same parts are continuous in RAM. So you might need to batch these into three and reset ports in between. Which segues nicely into DMA and HDMA allocation. 
the common format is normal DMAs up from zero and then allocate HDMA down from seven. But you can do it the other way, doesn't matter. Getting data into the buffers. For some things you might just load the data and write it manually. For example, updating 32 tiles that are sparsely defined in memory from meta tile data. Copying it to a linear buffer to then DMA one shot. If you're not heavily constrained for vblank time, and face it, 98% of platformers aren't, it would just give you more time in the frame to just LDA tile comma X, SDA port, LDA tile plus meta tile width comma X, SDA port, etc. Now, space tile updates, you are building a player frame from a large set and for space reasons don't have the frames packed in order. So you need to do two, three, four separate DMAs. Well, that can start to eat up vblank time. You might even be doing dynamic sprite allocation, so you need to put it in the final place. As mentioned before, you can blow room space and store each anim frame as per pack DMA frames. You can skip the mode and desk, possibly the length as well, and substitute them in when you write the DMA data. You manually set the port address before firing all the DMAs and this will give you sequential writes for all of the tiles. Just make sure the tile data fits in a single 128 pixel wide row or it'll overflow badly. Using the WRAM port mid frame? Yeah, probably not. So you can set it to the base of the buffer, then just write to the port or DMA to the port anything you want to add to the buffer. If you keep the DMA source untouched during the DMA run, you don't need to store the offsets, just the length of each DMA segment. This covers all the major large components, but there are still some miscellaneous items and other details to cover in future videos, so I'll still see you soon.